I'm still just as confused as ever. What is up, my brethren? This is Heckle TV. I am Jarvis Black. Thank you for coming back. All right, so where did we leave off before? Christine and Michael Barnett were accused of neglect. Charges were dismissed. The state of Indiana filed an appeal. There was a whole bunch of like continuances or whatever filed so that the state could get their case together. Christine and Michael just recently filed their response. So there is a major update to this case. And I've read through everything. The state heavily went in on the credibility of Natalia's age. And I was really, really surprised by that. And in my opinion, I think that was a mistake. The reason that I think it's a mistake to continue to challenge her age in court is that it's already been done. It's already been challenged multiple times in the probate court and it's been upheld. Unlike all of the YouTube comments <laughs> and commenters that think it's just super easy to definitively determine her age, clearly it's not. Otherwise, the state would have provided some definitive evidence by now. From what I can tell and from what I, from what I read, they just rehashed the same evidence that they had before, citing the adoption papers, the Ukrainian birth certificate, and the adoption court ruling. In reading through the state's own argument, they said that the man's challenged her age multiple times. They finally ended up back in the probate court uh, where both sides they presented arguments they had witnesses and the court decided to uphold her age so the state's argument there is that the ruling wasn't valid um, because the state wasn't represented as a part of that court hearing now, again i'm just an idiot with an opinion and a youtube channel but i don't see how that makes the court ruling invalid Our, the state's argument repeats over and over and over again. Seriously, it's like a broken record if you read through the paperwork. That her age wasn't properly litigated <laughs> and basically boils down to, nah, -uh, that's not fair. Side note, if you want a fun drinking game, read through the state's filing and just look for the word unfair. Don't get me wrong, regardless of that's if that's right or wrong, I just don't, legally, I don't see the evidence there. But again, I'm an idiot. Maybe there's something big that I'm missing. In my stupid opinion, if the state wanted to go after the Barnetts, I feel like the focus should have been on neglect of a dependent with disabilities. And they do talk about that some in their argument, but their main focus is on her age. And I, I do want to address one thing because I've seen multiple times in the comments because I've brought this up before about, about the neglect of a dependent with disabilities. I've seen people comment like, you know, oh, just because Natalia is a little person doesn't mean that she's disabled. That is true. But even in the state's own argument, the argument is that she is disabled because of her type of dwarfism that's causing uh, issues with her knees and, and uh, hips. Also, they're saying because of the neglect of the Barnetts that she needed certain surgeries that she didn't get. That has caused additional issues because they weren't done, you know, in a timely manner or whatever. The other issue, evidently, I feel like both sides argued this pretty well, is the statute of limitations. The state is saying that the charges that were dismissed because of the statute of limitations doesn't apply because the neglect, the crime being committed, was ongoing over a stretch of multiple years from, from like 2013 to 2016. The Barnetts are arguing, well, that applies because evidently three of the charges no longer exist after 2014. So they're saying that the charges aren't valid. In that regard, I have no idea. How do you make that call? The judge is going to have to make that decision. Somebody who's way more qualified than I am to, you know, sort that out. The other thing I kept hearing a lot about the, the DNA, 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 the mother, DNA, the mother is a I didn't see any reference to that in the state's argument. I didn't see any definitive evidence from them. Now, granted, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the exhibits are confidential. So there may be evidence in this case that is behind lock and key, and we just, we can't see it. Now, who did provide a lot of evidence were Christine and Michael. Some of the more interesting stuff in Michael's filing, there was a, an investigation in 2012 with a detective that met with the Barnetts and Natalia. The detective noted that Natalia's speech was very developed. The detective met with ICE and noted the existence of adoption recommendation documents that indicated Natalia's age was in question. Natalia allegedly told the detective that the children's home in that she was in in Ukraine 
told her to lie about her age so that she could get adopted. The detective closed that case and referred the Barnetts to an attorney who helped them with the age change with the probate court. Christine also included a number of pieces of evidence. Again, these pieces of evidence are referenced in the documents. I can't see exactly what they were because they're listed as confidential. She provided evidence that Natalia allegedly admitted to a doctor that she was over 18 and had been lying to get treated like a child. She provided evidence that Natalia met with a psychotherapist uh, to whom she admitted being over 18 uh, multiple times. Um, Department of Child Services investigated and she allegedly told one of the case managers that she was in her 30s and that she wanted to kill Christine so that Michael could raise her. Again, I don't know what that evidence looks like that's been provided to substantiate that claim, but it's in the court filing. I would have to imagine there would have to be something there to substantiate that. Another family case manager with DCS reported that Natalia was incredibly in inconsistent with her age, uh, that she gave her ages ranging from 23 to 35, stating that she didn't want anyone to know her real age because she was afraid of being sent back to the Ukraine. Christine also provided evidence that in August of 2012, LaRue Carter Hospital charged her for being disruptive and propositioning male patients. In September of 2012, Natalia was hospitalized another couple of times for threatening to stab her brother and for trying to burn down her apartment. Again, this is not all the evidence that, that was provided by the Barnetts. It's just some of the, some of what was referenced that, that, uh, that I hadn't really heard widely talked about as opposed to just statements in the media or things like that that we've seen before. And as I keep saying, like, look, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a legal expert uh, or anything like that. I'm just an idiot who happened to stumble upon this case and became really, really interested in what is actually going on here. I'm not even a fan of the movie The Orphan. I've still never seen it. I have no idea. All of this stuff, the things that Barnett's are accused of is alleged. The things that Natalia is being accused of is alleged at this point. What is her, her real age? I don't... No. I was really surprised that the prosecution, that the state didn't bring up the D any DNA evidence, anything from the mother or anything like that. That makes me feel like the state doesn't think that the person who claimed to be the mom is a credible source or there just isn't enough factual information to back that up. And maybe I missed it. I don't know. So what do you guys think? Did I miss anything from the court documents that you thought was interesting that I should have brought up and talked about? Let me know in the comments down below. And what do you think about this case? It seems like most people are kind of dug in on their society. Either they think, you know, the whole thing's a fraud and it's, it is just like the movie, The Orphan, or they think that, you know, Natalia was actually a child and, and uh, the whole thing was fabricated by the Barnetts who are fraudsters. And every time I look at a new piece of evidence, a new court filing, I'm still just as confused as ever. I don't know whether or not she was really a child. I, from what I can see, just logically taking any kind of emotion out of it, I don't see definitive evidence that she was a child. I also don't see definitive evidence that she's an adult. Whether or not she was an adult, I always come back to the same question, which is, were the Barnetts justified in putting her in an apartment, paying for a year, and then moving to Canada? Even if she was an adult, given that she has disabilities due to her dwarfism, was that an okay thing to do? Was that right? And my guess is probably not. I don't know. There's a lot of nuance to this case, and there's a lot of competing information and facts. It's hard to know exactly what is true and not. We'll have to wait for the judge's ruling on this. All right, that's it for me today. That has been your update that I promised you. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the end of the video. Like and subscribe.